First, they took away support for i386 CPUs, breaking Linux on the Intel AD386. Then they took away support for the i486 CPUs, breaking Linux on the Intel 486SX. And this time, the Linux kernel team has just gone way too far. Now I can't run a modern Linux kernel on a distro from 2005. This is horrible. How dare you break user space like this? Which is what you might say if you spend all your time on the Pharonix forums. Recently, Greg Crow Hartman announced the removal of what were once really important kernel features. Config sysfs deprecated and config sysfs deprecated v2. There was a time where using this was basically essential on some distros. For example, when it was added in 2006 on Fedora 3, you basically needed it to boot the system properly. But nowadays on modern systems, it's not only useless, it's actively bad for your system. So what even do these options do? And why have they stuck around for so long? Well, like a lot of the early kernel stuff, I'm sure that if Linus and the rest of the maintainers could go back, they would probably erase some of those early design decisions and start doing more of what they're doing today. And sysfs is one of those areas. So you've probably heard that everything on Linux is a file, and sysfs is part of why. So sysfs is a pseudo file system, basically a hierarchy that has things that look like files in it, but rather than those files pointing to documents, images, videos, things like that, instead they point to non-file objects, things like petitions for example, devices, and things like that. So this is provided by the Linux kernel and exports information about various kernel subsystems, hardware devices, and associated device drivers from the kernel's device model to user space through virtual files. In addition to providing information about various devices and kernel subsystems, exported virtual files are also used for their configuration. But prior to kernel 2.6.0 in 2004, sysfs wasn't being shipped with the kernel. Instead, an older model was being used in its place. And the reason why sysfs exists is basically to address limitations with this older model. For example, providing a unified method of device driver relationships, providing a generic hot plug mechanism and uncluttering procfs with all of this non-process information. Procfs is basically the same thing as sysfs, but sysfs is about the hardware and things like that, whereas procfs is about the processes running on the system. Due to this being a very new solution, doing a lot of things very differently, and at the time, still being subject to a lot of change, this caused a bit of an issue for some distros out there. It wasn't an issue for the non-UDev distros, but for distros like Fedora 3 Heidelberg, that was not the case. Yes, there was a time where Fedora Linux actually did name every single release. For these UDev distros of the time, it was causing some boot problems, basically making the distros a little bit less convenient to use. And this problem stuck around for a couple of years, up until 2006, when config sysfs deprecated was added. But this was never intended to be something that stuck around forever. This was supposed to be a stopgap until distros updated to newer software that made use of this newer version of sysfs that would no longer be causing a problem. And along the way, other changes ended up being made. So in 2007, the location of slash sys block was moved to slash sys slash class slash block, adding another thing that would cause issues for distros still using older tooling. Now being a stopgap that exists solely for the purpose of holding distros over until the transition is fully complete, the idea from the start is eventually the option is going to be removed. 
And that was the plan back in 2010. 2010, while being a mostly arbitrary year, was selected because by that point, pretty much every distro that matters that isn't end of life is going to be on a new enough version of software where it's just simply not an issue. Any of the LTS releases will have new LTS releases and it should be good to go. And even tools like UDev had literally stopped supporting the option. This is the release of UDev 136 back in 2009. And if we go way down to the bottom to support some advanced features, Linux 2.6.22 is the oldest supported version now. The kernel config with enabled sysfs deprecated is no longer supported. If the option remained enabled, UDev was not going to function correctly and it would even give you a warning message saying, go and disable this, why are you still running it? But here's the thing, there were some kernel developers who didn't want it to go away. Four years later, in 2010, the option was attempted to be removed as most of the user space should have been fixed up properly by then. But some kernel developers clung to those old systems and refused to update. So they were running these really old distros, but just updating the kernel to make sure things go along and continue working. So instead of just being a build time option, like the original sysfs deprecated, now with v2, it is a runtime option. So if you need it to be enabled, you need it to not be enabled, that can be done with the single kernel binary. This was added with this patch set right here. SysFS allow boot time switching between deprecated and modern SysFS layout. Keep in mind, this is 2010. I have some systems which need legacy SysFS due to old UDev versions, and it's a big hassle to compile separate kernels for them. This patch turns the config sysfs deprecated into a runtime option that can be switched on and off at the kernel command line. This way, the same binary can be used in both cases with just an option on the command line. But that use case didn't stick around forever, and much of the old logic included in the kernel that was added by these options has actually been stripped away over the years and isn't anything like it originally was. What's basically left today is the workaround for the location change, so from sysblock to sysclassblock. And considering we are 19 years after when the option needed to be added, and 17 years after when it first was added, surely no other systems out there are causing a problem. Because the original changes were done to use space tools in 2006 and all distros that use those tools are long end of life and older non-UDev based systems do not care about block layers sysfs representation, it is time to finally remove this old logic and the config entries from the kernel. But I'm sure there's going to be at least one or two people out there that are like yes, I am running Fedora 3, and I am using Linux 6.2. There's going to be someone. I don't know why you exist, but I'm sure they're going to be out there. Now, even though it was dumb, I can see why the option stuck around past 2010. Yes, you probably should have gone and updated your system and used a newer distro. But, you know, one year, two year out of date, I can see why you might keep that system going, especially if it's just, you know, sitting in a box somewhere and you occasionally just install a new kernel on it and you don't really feel like changing out the entire distro. That makes sense. But past that point, it made less and less sense every single year. And I don't think this is even one of those weird, hey, we have this corporate use case, we need this option to stick around. Because I can't think of a single reason why you might have a corporate system that is running an old distro, but a new kernel. If anyone knows why that might happen, or if anyone happens to be using an old distro with a modern kernel, let me know why. And yeah, just let me know why you are doing that. I would really love to know. But from what I can see, removal of this is an absolute non-issue and probably would have been a non-issue 
10 or so years ago. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And if you liked the video, go and like the video. And if you really liked the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, Scribe, Silly Barrow Pay, linked down below. That's going to be it for me and... Report Bugs.